Hello and welcome to another video. Today, using ArcGIS Pro, we will try to understand if two variables have a relationship with each other and what type of relationship. To do this, I will use the local bivariate relationships tool and relate the number of cattle with CH4 emissions of Portuguese municipalities in 2019. So, without further ado, let's get to the video. Ok, so let's start the video by importing the data to our project. To do this, go to Map, then click on Add Data, then go to the folder that you have your data. In my case, it's on the desktop. As you can see here, I have my data in a geodatabase. This actually has a reason to be. So when using the data in a geodatabase, after using the local bivariate relationship tool, we are able to access scatter plot graphs for each one of our elements. So let's add the Cancels Portugal to our map. There we go. Now right click on the feature class and let's click on Attribute Table. So here we have a unique number for each element. We also have the municipalities of Midland Portugal, which are uh, 278. Then we have different types of animal husbandry, cattle, pigs, sheep, goats, equidae, birds, rabbits, hives, and the total of all animals. And finally, we also have the methane levels for each municipality. And how are we going to use this data? Let's try to understand spatially whether two variables are related to each other. So in this case, we will use the data from the cattle and the CH4 or methane. To do this, we will use the local bivariate relationship tool. But before we start, let's try to understand a little better what this tool does. So what is local bivariate relationships? It's how two variables relate to each other within a specific localized context. For example, is it normal for ice cream sales to increase when temperatures are higher? After using this tool, each input feature will be classified into one of the following relationship categories based on how reliably the explanatory variable can predict the dependent variable parameter value. The classification can be not significant, the relationship between the variables is not statistically significant, positive linear, the dependent variable increases linearly as the explanatory variable increases, negative linear, the dependent variable decreases linearly as the explanatory variable increases, concave, the dependent variable changes by a concave curve as the explanatory variable increases, Convex, the dependent variable changes by a convex curve as the explanatory variable increases. And finally we have undefined complex. The variables are significantly related, but the type of relationship cannot be reliably described by any other category. So how are we going to do this? In RTS Pro go to Analysis, then click on this drop-down arrow, go to More Tools, and just search for local bivariate relationships. Click on this one. For the input features, we will drag and drop the Cancels Portugal. Then for the dependent and explanatory variable, I will put cattle and CH4. Uh, according to what is on Esri website, one variable may accurately predict a second variable, but the second variable may not accurately predict the first. So you should always try both. That is, in this case, I will have to put cattle in the dependent and then in explanatory and see what result will be better. In this video, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to use the CH4 as dependent and cattle as explanatory. In number of neighbors, I will use the default value. The higher the value, the more neighbors will be used in the statistical analysis. With this enabled, we will have access to a scatterplot graph for each municipality. And for the level of confidence, I will use 90%. Let's now create an output for this new feature. I will save this in my file geo database and I will call it cattle or in this case ch4 underscore cattle ch4 
and click save and now we can run the tool. There we go. So at first glance, we can immediately see that the most predominant type of relationship is the linear positive type. And this means, uh, especially speaking, if we focus on the color of pink, when CH4 levels increase, the number of cattle also tends to increase. We can also see that we don't have any negative linear relationship in our map. And then we can check that we have a concave uh, type of relationship right here and undefined complex right here near Porto. And in the south, uh, some places with not significant type of relationship. Since we worked from the start on a geodatabase, if I click right here, for example, in this console, we can check this uh, scatter plot graph to understand a little bit more how this tool works. In this example, we can see in blue uh, which area of the graph this municipality is located, as well as the 30 closest neighbors. And it is based on these 30 neighbors that it was defined that the type of relationship of these two variables, so CH4 and Carl, is positive linear. We can check one more, for example, right here in Porto. Sometimes the graph doesn't appear at the first click. Let's try to click once again, okay. Now we can see the position of Porto compared to all the 30 closest neighbors in, in this case. In other words, the analysis for the 30 neighbors made the type of relationship also positive linear in this case. And uh, a very interesting thing is that we can also see which neighbors were used in this analysis. Since we have represented the ID of each municipality in this graph. For example, if we check the, the ID number 13 and if we double click, we zoom to the, to the municipality, one of the 30 municipalities used in this analysis. Let's now go to the Lisbon area and see what kind of graph we have in not significant relationships. For example, this one. We see that there is no trend line since there is a large dispersion of the data on this graph. Right here, a convex example. We can see that the line is convex. It seems to me that this point had a very important weight for this type of relationship since it's so far from all the others. That's all in this video. I hope I helped you or made you aware of this tool. I will leave the data used in the description down below and as well as the page on the Esri website that explains a little more about this tool. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment what you want to learn next.